Vocalo Radio, yeah, your mic's on. Vocalo Radio, Chicago's only urban alternative, 91.1 FM. We have a special guest in the studio, Omar Apollo. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for having me. You heard him riffing a little bit right there. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? You got a show tomorrow? I got a show tomorrow in Chicago. Love it. I mean, okay, so you're a Midwest kid, mm-hmm. Hobart, Indiana. I actually Googled it. And it looked exactly the way I thought Hobart, Indiana would look in the pictures. And I'm, I'm sure you get a lot of questions, but my biggest question was how you said you were doing Flocorico yeah. out there like, in Hobart? Uh, no, like Purdue University and stuff. I was, uh, basically, there was this dance group. I forgot what city it was, uh, but it was a little further, closer to Chicago. Um, mm-hmm. And it was Ballet Folklorico. And I would go, with, my brother did it, my sister did it. And I was like, oh, I want to do it with them. And that's where I, you know, started dancing and stuff. But, um, Oh, so yeah. it wasn't... Because I was like, where did he find Flocorico classes out here in the... Well, they would do them in, <laughs> in Lake Station, which is in Hobart, which is right next uh-huh. to where I live. They would have them there at some, like, hall. Um, and I would just go there um, and learn. But there, there is... There's, uh, work, there's culture over there. <laughs> okay. The Mexicans are outside. <laughs> They, they came down from Chicago and they were like, it's better over here, it's cheaper. That, okay, that that was my biggest question. I was like, where did he take the classes? Super jealous, by the way. A lot of people might not know that you're like a dancer. You yeah. used to take the train into Chicago. So was your, your life like step up? Like, was that you? That's what you- I thought it was. <laughs> I like wanted to be that so bad. And I thought I was going to be a choreographer up until I was like 17. Do you still have dreams of that? Are you like, maybe one day I'll choreograph something? No, not at no, all. No, no, no friends music videos. You're not like, let me take the choreo on this one. Absolutely let not. Let me get the five, six, seven, eight. I got it. No, I think there's so many people that are way more better than me. <laughs> so I'm just going to let that rock. It's, it's the same way I feel about guitar. It's like a tool. I don't know. It's like, a, I, I can, I can play it and it's cool, but I can get somebody better to play it who actually, you know. I love that you could admit that. That's like the the ego's to the side there. Right, yeah. And what I love so much about like thinking about, you know, you growing up, you are, you know, Mexican American. Mm-hmm. I have to feel like this is the most on brand Mexican parent thing to do. That when you told your parents you wanted to be a singer, your dad's like, Well, you're not really that good. Yeah. So, <laughs> Super on brand. Is that with those is his exact words? I was like, that is a I Mexican. Mean, his exact words was you sound terrible. <laughs> That was his. That was the exact word. Um, and then, and then what you I, say? Honestly, that kind of like... that that propelled me. Okay, so what happened was is that we, me and my brother, I was like, hey, I was working on this cover. I forgot what the cover was. Um, and I played it for them, my parents. I think I was had to be sixteen, seventeen, or something like that. And then my dad is doesn't say anything. He looks at my brother who's playing guitar and was like, oh, you sound really good on guitar. And then walks away. And then I'm singing, and I'm singing around the house. And then he's like, "You look at me." He's like, "You sound terrible." And I was just like, and in my head, it instead of getting me down, and it, it more propelled me into into finding out what he thinks is good singing. Mm. So whenever he thought somebody was a good singer, I would pay attention. So he'd be like, we'd be watching something on the internet or on like live TV or something like that, and he'd be like, "Oh, they sound really good." I noticed that he really loved this part where they. They um they do like a strong vibrato like in Mexican culture it's like you know like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I didn't have that naturally, so that's why he thought I sucked. So I started. Oh, the baritone voices. Yeah. He was like looking for the bass. Yeah, yeah, like or just in general like that that uh the oscillation between two notes that mm. that uh, like creates that that sound. But um I didn't have it naturally, so that's why he thought I sucked. So then <laughs> I like YouTube how to get it. So I like trained and trained and trained and like was just doing it. And I finally got it and I sang it in front of him. He's like, whoa, like when did you get good? I was like, well, I mean, honestly, it's just vibrato. That's what you like, you know? So then I, I don't know, criticism as I got older started to change because it was like, oh, like it doesn't really matter, like, you know? Um, it kind of, he kind of like calloused me a bit to, I guess, like uh, anything negative. I love that. I mean, because again, that's Mexican parents. One thing, they will not lie to you. If you do yeah, not have talent, they're like kids. <laughs> like how kids are the so honesty, honest. Right? Yeah. 
<laughs> the transparency. Okay, I have to say, I listened to the new album, of course, God Said No. Mm-hmm. Um, and at first, I was like, we ride at dawn, because who hurt you? Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we're, we're ready to ride at dawn. Who, who hurt you? <laughs> I feel like as someone who's been really hurt in the past, I could hear it. I was like, oh, someone someone really, really did this, you know? Yeah. For you, like, is it hard for you to be that honest in your music or, like, open up about, like, things like heartbreak? No, I think language is beautiful. And some, some of the most, like, beautiful pieces of writing that I've heard have been in that vein, have been in that, like, you know, that lane of, of uh, vulnerability and how you speak about your feelings and honesty and openness. Um, so no, I don't, I don't feel any type of way. I th- I think that uh, it's a blessing I can get, I'm able to even, you know, tap into that, like myself in that way. Um, I feel like, you know, a lot of people, especially like that I know, like have been like, oh, like shut off. They shut off when something like that, when it comes to themselves, they shut it off. And yeah, and that's what I hope the music does is kind of just open it, you know, open that channel and like get you thinking about it whatever i also um like midway through the album i think i got like i felt like some emotions like a little emotional because i remember you saying that um you used to hide pronouns in your music like you wouldn't put he or she like you put a lot of use and stuff so you know to hide you know that you were gay or mm-hmm. things like that or you said quote unquote you were dl mm-hmm. you know <laughs> that's that's an exact quote <laughs> that you said you were dl um so as I'm listening to the music, like I did hear myself getting like I got a little emotional about that. When did that stop for you? Like, when did you decide to start putting the pronouns in the music? I mean, it was rough at first. When I first dropped my music on like SoundCloud, I like deleted it. So it was out and it was doing super well, better than any of my music had done at the time. When I was living in Indiana, I was getting like thousands and thousands of plays. And then I just deleted it because of everything that was happening around me like my my personal life was like you know falling because of it um and i in my head i was like you know well i have to stop it like you know like that this isn't worth like me not like me being alone you know mm-hmm. um and then i quickly realized that like you know um i found other people who really love me and care for me and you know it was tough at first for my family life and things like that, especially I feel like you would know what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, it was it wasn't easy. And I, and I remember the first time this is a song I have called Stay Back that has like the like gay undertones. Um, and I, I remember I was freaking out right before um, I was calling the the director. I stripped just his phone and I was just like, <laughs> bro, I'm not going to lie. I know we spent 30 racks on this. <laughs> But we gonna have to delete it. Like I'm not, I'm not <laughs> posting this. Like, cause I was so paranoid of disrupting this piece that I've, you know, had in, in my personal life for years and years and years and years. Um, and I finally just kind of just let it go. I was like, oh well, you know, if you really love me, it doesn't really matter. It's supposed to be unconditional, you know. So, um, and it was. It just took time, a lot of time. I feel like I really kind of not until like two years ago, a year ago, really. Like it really set in with like everybody in my personal life is like, okay. But like, I think a lot of people are, you know, ex- we're, we're in these bubbles in LA, Chicago, New York. It's like, oh yeah, it's all cool. Like, you know, be gay, da da da. But it was actually really hard for me. Like, um, you know, like my my reality was, was all, you know, fumbling. So I was like touring the world and getting crazy phone calls from cousins and hearing crazy shit about me in Indiana. Like, you know, all this all this stuff that I was dealing with um, that I don't think anyone really understood at that time. But uh, yeah, it was hard. It wasn't easy. But now it's, uh, you know, it's, it's such a blessing. I'm just, you know, fortunate to be able to even be like a like a queer artist and that's, uh, you know, making making and writing music in the way that I choose and, and I don't feel like I need to hold anything back or stifle my writing for anybody. Congratulations. Thank you. Congrats. I know you see people and you're like, oh, you're so brave. Or people have like immediately just, you know, the like the rainbow flag on their profiles. And you're like, how do you do like, how do you do that? Like, <laughs> you're so brave. And sometimes it takes people. I love that. It sometimes it does take people a long time. Like, even if people know, it could take a long time for that to be like, okay, this is who I am. 
Um, and also, you're in the best city for that because I always say in Chicago, it's like everyone is queer until proven straight. Uh, like here, <laughs> like Chicago, like do you know what I'm saying? Like right. Chicago is just like a super queer city. Um, and looking at the album, I have some receipts here. I want to ask you about something. Okay, one of my favorite songs. It's <laughs> if I've not hit this is Spite, <laughs> and I was like, this is everything. I want to be in life. <laughs> like, it's like when you have a, t everyone wishes they had a toxic relationship, but it's like, this is, <laughs> this is a rich toxic relationship. You know what I'm talking about? I was like, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. It was like, it really was. <laughs> this is because if, for those that don't know, here's here. I highlighted <laughs> the lyrics I want to talk to you about right Go now. Ahead. Okay. Why you got to ruin every night? 50 K I spend it out of spite. And what about it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spend 50k out of spite? I'm not gonna lie, I spent more than that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad. <laughs> so it is true, right? And so this is oh, like a rich, toxic relationship. Oh yes, that's why I'm wearing a hundred thousand dollars earrings and a cover. Ooh, and a and a, and a fur coat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was you different. Need, you need to let people know. <laughs> it was given. Our relationship was given artisanal glass. <laughs> It was given uh, million dollar paintings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I I mean I love this because it just seems I know you're not what what are you I I mean I'm a Taurus. I, okay. What are you talking about? I know you yeah Mexican? I know you're not a Gemini. Taurus. Because I'm a Gemini, but this is the most Gemini song a Taurus has ever written. <laughs> okay, well I got Scorpio and Leo in my shit. Really? <laughs> so revenge is real. Yeah, no, I was just like because you're saying like oh I don't want anything to do with you, but I still want to take you on a date. Right. But I did this, this, and get to you. But so it was. It was really funny to see that song. Is it that what it was like? It's two different things of like two emotions. Yeah. I don't want to see you again, but I kind of want to take you on a date. It's two emotions existing at the same time. Yeah. A lot of emotions existing at the same time. It's like uh, it was very. I was a very confusing time. Oh, uh, I definitely wasn't rooted. I was like, oh, if I'm, you know, I don't know what to do. I want to go and I want to, you know, pursue this, put energy into this, and develop this into something that lasts. You know, very long time. I don't know how long, but as long as I could, you know, but it didn't. <laughs> do, you, do you wait a long time do, of the aftermath of a relationship to write a song about it? Or? I was writing God Said No during this relationship. I was writing songs and then having conversations about my my inner dialogues that night. <laughs> okay. I'd be like, you know what? Because I was thinking about it today. Like, what? <laughs> You're like, actually, I have more to say. Actually, I like, wait. <laughs> Um, and of course, one song that everyone's kind of talking about is Pedro. Mm -hmm. I kind of love this friendship. This is like probably one of my favorite friendships of 2024 <laughs> to find out that you and Zaddy Pedro are besties. It's actually my dog. We actually are really close friends. <laughs> he's he's great. And so this this feature was this was this recorded in the studio or it kind of sounded like a voice note was it meant yeah. to sound like that or yeah yeah I told well he'd been to the studio he was there um a few times I'm just imagining in my mind so yeah, you're just singing like, beautiful and then Pedro's just chilling there in the studio yeah yeah he was his like <laughs> sister and like all, you know his family um in like New York and then I would play him stuff I was playing every, him everything um. And then specifically, he really loved Glow. I think I showed him that, like on, on like an iPhone, like in, in the street or something, <laughs> like with his ear or something. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot. Um, but um, yeah, it was just uh, he was there while I was kind of going through all these things, and he understood what the album was about. He understood what, like, I guess what what I was feeling emotionally. So I asked him to do the voice note because I, I feel like he's one of the people that really understood what I was going through. So. Um, I asked him to share a story about grief, um, and I thought he did such a wonderful job. And I had this piece of music that I made in in London, um, that that I composed with with Tail Hom, who did like the whole album. And um, we we had this piece of music for so long. I loved it so much, but it, I wrote a song to it, but it wasn't working. And I was just like, oh. And then I I had this piece of music. And I was like, I need just need someone to talk over it. And then he was the first person that came to mind. How did he react when he heard it? Uh, he was sending me notes. He was like, he was like, <laughs> fix this. He was like, he was like, girl, take the delay off my voice right here. He's and like, I don't need that reverb. I don't need <laughs> no, my voice. Is good. He, said, he said, I don't need the reverb. I, he's like, I know you're trying to be fancy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, but it was cool. He's, he's, he was, uh, I mean, he's an artist, you know, 
he has a great mind and he's a great writer and he's a great, you know, creative person and obviously an amazing prolific actor. So it's great. Speaking of acting, mm-hmm. you are kind of on the scene a little bit right now. Yeah, I'm right? on the side. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something you always wanted to do? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to act. Um, I Yeah, I actually had been doing auditions like when I first went to L.A. Nothing ever felt right. Um, but I didn't even audition for this. Uh, somebody DM'd me. Said, yo, Luca wants you to be in a movie. I was like, word. And then they hit my email and then we got on the phone and he was just like, I really want you for this role. Um, are you down? And I was like, yeah. Okay, no audition. We see you. <laughs> and of course you're talking about... They sell one of my live performances and based off of, I guess, my charisma there, they they were like, oh, he's, he can do the role. He can do it. Yeah, you're talking about uh, Luca Guadagnino. Luca Guadagnino, yeah. And this upcoming film, uh, Queer, and it's it's premiering at the Venice Film Festival and stuff. Are you going to see it when it I'll premieres? I'll be there, yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, how exciting for you. Super excited. Do you think you killed it? I ate. I already <laughs> said it. <laughs> it's, it's a wrap. Uh, it's, it's a wrap. <laughs> like, come on now. I, I did, honestly, it was like a great experience. And, it, and yeah, it was interesting because it's acting and it's... Similar to a music video, but I definitely, I mean, Daniel Craig, I was just like, let me just get in my bag. He was super cool. Um, we had like a dope scene and yeah, I think it's going to be really cool. So are we going to see you more? We're going to see you more on our screens? I don't know. I mean, it's, <laughs> if it times right, like, you know, I love making music. Music's first for me. Mm. Um, but I love film. I love, love, love film. I'm watch, constantly watching um, different films from different eras and directors and um, you know I'll find a director and watch every single film and I think that that just kind of like but no auditions about... you just want offers only yeah girl okay. they gotta call me <laughs> come on you think I, I'm not gonna you know um, so my I know you're the baby of your family mm-hmm. my sister that's why I'm like this by the way <laughs> My little sister, I know you can tell spoiled. Uh, my little sister is the baby of my family. She's a huge fan. And so I was like, okay, you get one question, girl. She's like, I need to know about the Kali Uchi song. She's like, uh, Which worth, one? worth the wait. Worth the wait, yeah. Yeah, she's like, she's like, I, it should be illegal for them to do a song together. It is so sensual, both your guys' voices. <laughs> she's like, what was it like working with Kali? You guys are good friends, right? Yeah, Kali's like my sister. And she just had a baby, bless her. And uh, yeah, d- I haven't been able to see her much. Um, but we talked the other day and, and we caught up and I, I really miss her. Um, but uh, working with her was amazing. I mean, I, one of the first artists I've ever worked with was her. Oh, wow. The first track we did was Hey Boy. I remember being, she. I, uh, we were going to a restaurant. She was sitting in the car and I was driving. I was playing her music. She was playing music. And I played her Hey Boy. She's like, oh, I'll get on that. And I was just like, word? And then... We go eat, we have a good day, but whatever. And the next day she texts me, she's like, oh, you should uh, uh come over, we'll record that song. And I was just like, okay, cool. We go, she literally has a notepad, but she didn't like really use it. She doesn't hum anything, she does it all in her head. And then she went and did it in like less than 45 minutes. And I was just like, whoa. And I was just like watching her, like how she does her vocals and everything. It's the first time me watching anybody do vocals like that, you know? Um, so I learned a lot from her and then I think maybe a few weeks later, um, I had a bunch of beats I was making and I played her the beat to, uh, Worth the Wait and, um, we were at like a, somewhere in the hills and, um, she was, she had a setup and everything and then I, uh, I played the, the beat and she was like, oh, send it to me. I was like, all right, bet. And then we just like had the rest of our night and then, um, she sends it back like weeks later and it's just like, oh, I wrote a song that's going on my album. I was like, word. Like, <laughs> cool. And I, I already had my vocal on it. Like I just had the chorus vocal. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to be around you. I just had that. Um, she wrote around it and, and composed it and moved things around and um, produced it out more. But um, yeah, it was just a beat that I had with like bass and some keys and stuff and drums. And for everyone that's listening, The Hills, you're talking about Hollywood Hills. I was going to say, yeah. now that you live in Pasadena... It makes, I feel like that makes so much sense. You seem like a born and raised California, Southern California boy. Six years. You re- you really, you there. fit in good, right? Like, it seems like that's where you belong. I love it there, yeah. But I'm thinking about moving back now. Um, just because, like, I'm barely there. Mm. I'm, I love traveling. I'm outside. Like, You miss the family? 
Yeah, I miss my family. Yeah. I have a lot of nieces and nephews. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking. I'm like peeping. moving moving back to Hobart. Not Hobart, no. <laughs> um, your tiny desk was amazing. Thank that you. That got released. Um, I really love that you started off with the mariachi band, mm-hmm. and it was was it all female yeah. mariachi band. I love that, and you know when you start off, and you pulled, you gave us a grito in there. Can we hear? Huh. Can we hear real quick? <laughs> I died when you pulled out the grito in there. Um, we but gotta I represent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's classic. I mean, it was my uncles, deals, everyone. I just hear them in the middle of the night, drunk as hell, just being like, <laughs> <laughs> just going crazy. And the tamborazo dancing, right? Like yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. stomping Durante. around. <laughs> um, did you hear a lot like of that growing up? Because I remember, like, that's my, all I heard. That's all. That's like corridos and yeah. stuff. Like, uh, but more classic guys, like. Um, none of the new stuff. The new stuff I got exposed to later. But um, my mom would put me on the Pedro Infantes. Um, my dad put me on Los Bukis. Very like sixties, mm-hmm. um, fifties kind of traditional corridos and like Cien Años. That song is was huge, seminal for like my development as like. A listener and consumer of our music but did you okay so did you like it because i remember my grandma dropping me off playing like like she played a bachata which now i play but but like back then i was like okay bye like hiding my face like can we turn this down um did you really embrace it or i know for later like it was something i embraced as i got older um i embraced it yeah and i also definitely um my mom worked at a barber shop with, uh, and the owner was Puerto Rican, and she she played reggaeton, bachata, everything. I'd be there all day. I'm like, what's this? <laughs> She's like, no son groserías. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, nah, this is fire, like you know. And uh, I loved it. I thought it was cool. And I learned the lyrics when I was like eight, like some really crazy songs. I was gonna say the lyrics are crazy. <laughs> like yeah. you think English music is wild? Like <laughs> no, especially like the old school Spanish. You're like what were you saying? Yeah. Like. It's crazy. It's not a day, quita de, it is malte, de cameta falte. <laughs> that was my shit. I was like, <laughs> um, okay, so one last question. Um, this one's for the fans. Cause you are a heartthrob. Like, <laughs> you know that, right? You're like a heartthrob. If you look in your comments, everyone's thirsty. <laughs> they need some water. They're parched. Um, so for, for the fans. I'm flattered. <laughs> I don't see it, but thank you. What's something in a, another person that makes you really attracted to them? Like, what's something you, you look for when you're looking at, like, someone you're looking to vibe with? Um, I think it has a lot to do with their spirit. Um, If they're, like amplifying or or taking down or if they you know like they walk into a room and they light it up and um but I also kind of like you know the little quiet guy in the corner I don't know something about that too I don't know honestly it's it's tough I I really don't know I guess my friends kind of know they'd be like oh yeah you'd like him like oh yeah you'd like him. like you know what I mean just, I I would personally don't know and so one of my friends is just like I don't get your like attraction. Your, your radar yeah, is all over the like, place. I don't get it. Like you're, it's everywhere. <laughs> and, and then like my brother, my oldest brother, he really knows. Like he can really be like, point and be like, oh yeah, that's your vibe. But like it's just funny, because like some people that are with me every single day are still like, I don't know, bro. Like <laughs> I don't know what you're on. But I think you know it has a lot to do with, um, yeah, just like somebody's energy. Um, and and their spirit and their, and their charisma and like you know and ha- and where the where it's placed you know what I mean like it's like very interesting to me I don't know I I don't, I'm single right now I don't need no man I'm chilling I'm like <laughs> shit I gotta do my little tour I'm gonna put out my little movie you're busy I'm not worried about that like you're, you know you're what I'm saying and busy, yes. like we, we are, I'm working are you in your catching flights not feelings era like yeah, that's the yeah, era that's we're in. I'm, I'm always in that. <laughs> That, that 2023 was that was that was my time to be sad i'm cool now <laughs> yes you need that happy period after you're like i just need to be alone and happy that's how i feel okay i love that i love that for you and uh thank you so much omar apollo for stopping by you're gonna be playing tomorrow at the huntington uh, bank pavilion in Nor- northerly island what could people expect they're, they're going to Omar Apollo's show. Yeah. What's the energy going to be? Oh, it's completely different than any other show I've ever done. There's tons of, like, 
dancing and theatrical moments and big moments and, you know, very silhouetted and very um, emotional. But at the same time, there's a lot of dance, a lot of energy, a lot of, um, yeah, like I had, I'm working with this, this guy who I've been watching since I was like 14. His name is Keone Madrid. Um, he's an extremely talented choreographer, but that's like a very small part of what he can do. Even though he's so, you know, like he has a legacy of dance behind him, but he is more, I see him more as like a creative person all around now. Um, and he did the whole tour and, and uh, creative directed everything. And, and yeah, it was, it's been like a really crazy journey. And I, I love him. I'm going to keep working with him. He's great. And you said this is, you said before we got to Mike, this is going to be the best show of the tour. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. You think I'm lying? Like, <laughs> like it's going to be the best. Like, the girls are going to, they're they're gagging. <laughs> they um, have their masks on. <laughs> <laughs> Gagged and gooped, okay? <laughs> yeah. I love it. Thank you so much, Omar, for stopping by. Um, because I know it could be really hard to make time for press on a crazy tour run like this. And we're going to play uh, <laughs> my favorite song off your album. We're going to get into Spite a little bit. Um, so could you introduce it for us? And, and, and you could be the DJ for a second and I'll play the song. What's up? This is Omar Apollo. I'm going to play you my song, Spite. It's the best song of the summer. I'm not even joking. Play it like 10 times. I love you. Thank you. Thank you.